So today I wanna show you my ship breaker. This guy is well the Bomberman reincarnated. For those of you who didn't know, I did have a Bomberman Elementalist back before Forgotten Gods, but using Aerosmith Salvos, but unfortunately he died to Father Kaiman on the first day of the expansion, so I wasn't really able to optimize him with new Forgotten Gods gear or like augments, but I redid the idea, but this time as a Shipbreaker instead, so this time it's a Fire Bomberman, and the main weapon, or like the main thing that I'm using here is the Mythic Adversary, and also I'm using 4-piece Ulzu instead. Um, as always, let's start off with, with the skill point uh, distribution first. So, we are a Demo and an Oathkeeper, and Demo is our main, so we are using Granada as our main ability, so um, we're hard capping this, hard capping this, and I kinda want to hard cap this as well, but I got to 20 out of 12, and I believe that's like the best we got to so far. Like pushing this to 22 would like um, make the build worse in like another way, probably. Anyways, we have like flashbang and searing light. This is at 10 and this at 8. I think this was like a little bit more than a one pointer now because we have like the buff to the ship uh, to the to our 200 weapons, right? Um, like, for those of you that don't know, in the newest patch, 1.1.4, basically all two-handers that gave you plus one to a certain mastery now give you plus two instead to that mastery. So, this weapon now gives you plus two demo, plus two soldier, and plus two oathkeeper instead of plus one to those. So that's a big buff for that weapon. And basically it means that I got plus one to all skills compared to last patch. So yeah, these are like three points now, I think. I mean, obviously like, you wanna have those at soft cap if you can, but I wasn't really able to. This is a one pointer only. One point gives me eight points here actually with the uh, setup I have. Um, Blackwater Cocktail is our debuff and also resistance reduction, like for flat resistance reduction. So one point here, one point here to increase the duration, also reduce enemy physical damage. And then this one to uh, apply the resistance reduction. This one is hard capped, um, or like put as many points as you can here. Um, same for flame touch, you want as many points as you can in this one. For the OA, 205 OA, 199% fire damage here, and also some flat fire damage, which we are using also for Granado because Granado does have weapon damage with the weapon we're using. And then one point to temper. Um, plus shield, just a sweet spot um, at 10 out of 12 here to get that those like plus 5 max auras. You could also put this up to 14 I guess. Maybe putting this up to 14 is better actually. But I think I wasn't quite able to because like all of these are one pointer. And then also we are using canister bomb because by using canister bomb or like not using canister bomb with Uzu inside that's kinda weird. Um yet so many bonuses to canister bomb. Like, these are just one-pointers, and we have improved casing at 14 out of 10, actually. And, uh, because of Uzu inset, converting this internal trauma to, f to burn. That's still, like, a nice secondary source of burn, right? And also, we proc some devotions with those, so it's not too bad to use this in between. Um, then we got Uzuin's chosen at 20 out of 10 here. This, as well, the damage modifier for Granado and, uh, Canister Bomb. And also grants us... 40% chance to use our ability again, so 40% chance of 100% skill CDR, and also reduce skill energy cost. Then we have Thermite Mines, which are now updated. As you can see, they don't bounce anymore, they are instant cost, kinda like Inquisitor runes. So this is a nice quality of life upgrade. It does look a little bit wonky maybe, and maybe it looked better before, but I think it's actually fine. And yeah, for like quality of, uh, I mean for, for like, uh, when it comes to performance, this is much better than before. So, yeah. And these reduce enemy resistances by 34%. This is again a sweet spot, like every point up to 10 points out of 16 gives you minus 2% more element resistance reduction. And after that, only 1 point, or like 1%. So, yeah, sweet spot here again. 
Um, Vindictive Flame and Uzin's Wrath, these are only one pointers. Like, we don't really need the total speed, but I mean, for one point, 13%, pretty nice. And this is also one pointer. This got buffed last patch, or like this patch. Um, which probably means we're getting a little bit more lifesteal from this, or like this is like a better healing ability now. Um, it was pretty bad last patch though, I don't know if the, the buff was enough to like make this even... Like if you can even feed it now, maybe you can. I didn't play this character so much in this last patch so far. Um, and then we have the Oathkeeper as like our secondary mastery, basically our support mastery here. Presence of Virtue, 12 out of 12. Or the flat offensive ability. Basically, nothing really other than that. I mean, some energy regen and some internal trauma is also pretty nice, actually, which gets added to weapon damage again. So we apply this with Granado as well. Um, Haven, just the one pointer. Or the, the first three points give you like 3% each, right? HP. And then after that, 2%, up to 5. Or well, up to, yeah, up to 5. And then after 5 out of 10, it gives you only 1%. So you can, you can definitely put up to 5 out of 10 points here. I think that's also fine. Um, but more than 5 is like not really that worth it, if you compare it to like other similar skills, like the Shaman one. And then Rebuke, well just the one pointer, just some flat physical damage which we convert to fire, um, when we're using Granado at least. So yeah, also well, a nice one pointer. Uh, resilience, 5 out of 12 for this one, these are like 3 points I believe that I put here, because 5 out of 12 is a... Like a Nice sweet spot here, you get plus 4 max RS, 8% physical res, and 8% DA on this. The second uh, second breaker that most of the time procs together with last year, this one procs at 60%, this one at 66%, so most of the time they will proc at the same time, and that makes you super tanky during that duration. And then Ascension. I still think it's an uh, awesome spell, so yeah. We hard cap this for max flat absorption because flat absorption is great and also it gives us a damage boost. 188% all damage. And the clarity of purpose does like the even more damage boost boost that we get here because of the 15% OA. And stun res for his or CC resistances basically. Very nice. Still the same as before. Kinda. It's like a little bit better to overcap this now, but because you get like 1% away every 2 points instead of every 3 points now, but still pretty expensive, so I prefer to have this at its soft cap. Um, Guardian of Empyrean, 1 point here, and we basically use these just for a resistance reduction bot. But yeah, uh, this one got nerfed in this patch actually, like, Celestial Presence gives you like 5% less resistances across the board. I guess it's fine, it's, you don't really have to apply this, it's like a passive from a pet, so you. It's very easy to, well, just do what you want anyways, and have the res resistance reduction around you all the time. So I think the nerf is kind of fine. I mean, it's still super good, and you still want to at least soft cap this, or even put two more additional points like I did here. And then our ex exclusive aura, Divine Mandate. Uh, huge amounts of flat internal trauma, which gets converted via Granado, uh, like on Granado at least, via our two-hander. And slow resistance, 54 crit damage, and percent fire and percent burn. That's like the interesting stuff for us here. So yeah, that's it for the skills. You can take a look at the devotions now. So for devotions, for this fire character, we are using um, Meteor Shower, Phoenix, Magi, Ghoul, Solar Switchblades, Chariot, Bard's Harp, and like some other, f well, tier 1 devotions that we need. Notice that I'm not using Rowan's Crown or like any of the other flat resistance reduction notes here. That's because, well, we have this at 18 out of 12, so 31. Red RR is already very, very good, so we don't need those. And I mean, they don't stack with each other, so only the highest one applies. And this one is, I believe, the highest one, which can up go up to 32. Like, just one more Resistance reduction for like a complete devotion, that's not worth it. So basically this build uses Phoenix instead of Bronze Crown, which is a very nice defensive devotion. And Phoenix goes very well with Inspiration, Inspiration goes kind of well with Chariot. That's why I'm only stuck with one um, tier 3 devotion here. So yeah, Ozone's Torch gives you, what, fire damage, OA, percent, OA, 5% even, 15%, Chaos, Res, 
10% crit, movement speed, burn damage with increased duration, and the proc, which is, well, not the best out of all the tier 3 devotions, but it's it's fine. I mean, the notes here are like the juicy stuff, and the note is like a, a good thing on top, I guess. Um, then we have the Magi, which is like the main damage devotion, basically. Like, the notes are worse than Uzuin's, obviously, because it's only a tier 2, but the proc is actually better than Uzuin's, in my opinion. Fire damage, burn damage, DA, DA, burn, fire, burn, and the skill. That's just really nice. Um, then the other must have for all fire builds is Solaris Witchblade. Fire damage, Jamie. I mean, the notes are kind of bad, but the proc has fire resistance reduction, 23%, so that's a must have. We have bound us to Guardians of Empyrean. Mm. I'm using Ghoul as my, well, lifesteal slash circuit breaker because I still, I still think that Ghoul is like probably one of, if not the best devotion for like builds that have a lot of weapon damage. And we have weapon damage, so yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty juicy. The only kind of bad thing about this is that it's only proccing once you're below 45% HP, which is kind of sketchy for hardcore, but it's super good for softcore and then. And even on hardcore, it's pretty good, so... Um, and we get the Chariot, this is basically for... Well... Cunning, offensive ability... A little bit of DA and armor and a small heal on the proc, actually, as well. But yeah, it's mostly about offensive ability here. And also, yeah, the, this proc of Kudish Hanagur gives you like a lot of attack speed, a lot of physical resistance, and... 80% lifesteal, so that's insane. Um... Then the Phoenix. The Phoenix gives you well, elemental damage, Chaos Res, Aether, elemental damage. We don't care about the Aether though. Crit damage here, which, which is also pretty nice. Um, and then Phoenix Fire, which gives you flat absorption. So this stacks together with Ascension. And those two work pretty well together to make, make you tanky, in my opinion. I like Phoenix, like, I, I like it a lot now. Like, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty good state now, I would say. Like. You don't always have to pick this, but you have like another source of flat absorption, like either Inquisitor's Seal or Ascension. It kind of meshes well together with, because like the more flat absorption you have, the better it becomes. And uh, yeah, since this build doesn't need Rowan's Crown, it's a nice, a nice fit here. And then we're also using the Bard's Harp um, for energy, and also like this has some elemental damage as well, some good resistances, some energy. And the proc, which gives you OA and DA as well, along with like a lot of energy. 25% energy restored is actually very, very strong. For builds that need energy, at least. Um, now, I don't have the percent elemental resistance reduction from Ultos, but I have it from Viper. So, yeah. Also, what do we need? Like, we need like 15 greens, 8 reds, um, 6 blues for those. 6 blues for the 6 purple, 3 yellow, 3 yellow here as well. Um, well, well, yeah. But this is kind of all over the place a little bit, because we're only using 1 tier 3 devotion. So how do we get our 15 greens? Well, 15 greens, you got Quill. Quill gives you like elemental damage, Aether resistance, HP, and some more DA here. Quill is like pretty decent if you need, but like probably one of, if not the best, devotion if you need green and purple affinity for a tier 1 devotion. And we got Hawk, this is very awesome for this build because it re reduces the cunning requirement for our two-hander. Alongside some crit damage and OA, that's also very nice as well. Um, Magi gives us 3 green, Aladras Phoenix is 2, so this is 5, 8, 11, this one gives us 1, 12, and then Chariot 3, so 15 greens. Like this, and then we need eight reds, right? Chariot gives us two, which fire one, three, we will three, that's six, and then wiper two, that's eight. Uh, we need eight blues, right? Eight blues, three from wiper, one from crossroads, and two from the harp. So that's uh, five, right? Where's the last one? Wait, 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 never mind, that's six. I can't count. <laughs> Alright, and then uh, yellows, right? We need three yellows for this and three yellows for this. Harp gives us, gives us, gives us two. This gives us one, so that's three yellows. Um, purples, we need six purples for the harp as well. 
3 from the Quill, 2 from the Phoenix, and 1 from the Crossroads here. And we had like 1 point um, spare, so whenever you have 1 point spare and you're into Purple Devotion already, you can always take these 15% stun reduction here. Um, I took it over this one because, well, this would give you some damage, but I would probably only take these if I can also take the second one. Like, the second one's way better than the first one. But, yeah. I think the stun resistance here is actually more useful. Because our stun resistance is, like, not the best without this, I think. So, yeah, that's why I took it as, as well. And also, this one gives us 15%, right? Since, like... Two patches ago, I think. That's 30% stun reduction we can't we get just from the divisions. That's pretty nice. Let's move on to the gear. Um, as I said before, adversary is our main uh, build defining weapon here, or like item here. And um, four piece also in chat uh, chest is like ever since the last update to this chest in 1.1.2, this is like for demo casters. At least if you're using Canister Bomb or Granado, this is so good. Or like any kind of fire demo caster, I guess. I mean, even though this doesn't really give us anything from Granado, it gives you also its Chosen, which is also needed for Granado. Uh, Temper is always decent to have. Vindictive Flame is also decent to have on any uh, demo, right? And then this modifier to Blast Shield is really good. Like HP restored on Blast Shield and 2 seconds skill recharge duration. This makes Blast Shield so good on this character, it's insane. And also, 3 set bonus gives you 15% fizz res, that's insane as well, and 4 set gives you plus 2 demo, which is very welcome as well. Um, yeah, the adversary though, this one is the thing that gives you weapon damage to Granado and converts your physical damage to fire to Granado, and also reduces skill recharge to by 0.5 seconds. And it also gives you some weapon damage to, to Candice the Bomb, so that's also Another reason why I'm still using Canister Bomb on this build, even though it has like Granado focus. Because um, we can also lifesteal off Canister Bomb this way. Um, now for the rings, I mean, these are green rings, and I know they're not that easy to get, but you should try to have one Gargoyle ring for this build. And like which FXs you use, that kind of depends on like what you need on your specific setup. But yeah, one Gargoyle ring is like. Very nice, and then you can either use a living ring or you could use a um, combustion ring that reduces any fire resistance, for example. I'm using living ring here because this one gives me a lot of OA and also good resistances. Um, this one is also for resistances and celerity because, well, why not? I mean, we're a caster. We're basically mostly like a, a cooldown reduction caster, so we don't need the casting speed that badly, but it still helps a bit. Um, you're using Kubakabras here. These are to help maxing out high impact here. And well, Kubakabras are also always pretty nice. These give us elemental resistance, DA, and vitality gives us the 1000 HP. Uh, but you can like feel free to use either any Kuba or like any other legendary pants that you would like to use. These are like you don't have to have exactly these, obviously. With the Instormant, this, on the other hand, it's, I think, best in slot for the belt, for this build. Plus one demo, plus two Granada, everything we want. Also plus two Divine Mandate and plus two Vindictive Flame, even like, this is so perfect for this build, it's insane. Um, kind of the, the same thing for the gloves, I mean, this gives you burn damage for Granado, skill energy cost reduction for Granado, plus three improved casing, plus three high impact, plus two righteous fervor. I mean, we're not using RF, but in theory, I mean, you could actually use RF, like if you have some spare points or like if you want to try a different setup, you can use uh, RF as your filler instead of blazing eruption. I'm using blazing eruption right now because I have this redic here, Fogox Deception. And uh, well, it gives you plus two, uh, plus one demo. Um, on average, it has 3% OA and 3% DA, so this is kind of a bad roll, actually. And it also gives you this ability, which is honestly not that amazing, this one. It's like a Fire Prime Strike kind of ability. Um, but I mean, it's a filler, so it's fine. It could use like a small buff, though, I guess. And then for the metal, I went with Mark of Divinity. 
because this has insane synergy with Shield Breaker actually. Plus 3 Flame Touch, plus 2 Ozuin's Chosen, plus 2 Divine Mandate. Gives you a bunch of HP. Elemental Resistances, plus 3 max Elemental Resistances. Less damage from Ethereus and Aether Corruptions. And, uh, I mean, the proc is also, well. I don't really like the proc that much. It's very. Like, you have to drop very, very low. But. Uh, it's. Okay. It, I mean, it's like another defensive mechanism that can save your character if it's, like, in a really, 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 really bad spot. So that's fine. And for components, I'm using the uh, triple. Agnabog Leather here to for like bleed and poison resistance and also for DA. Ancient armor plate. Actually, you could also use scaled height here instead if you would like to have better armor. Overall armor rating, I guess. This one also gives me like a little bit of DA through the physique and HP. It's like oh I don't know, it doesn't really matter that much. Does armor really matter on a like a Coronado caster that much? I don't really think so. Because our Physical resistance is also kinda okay-ish, I think. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, physical resistance is actually bad on this character. Like, the only physical resistance that we get is that they're 15% from the Uzuins. So if we didn't have this set, it would be even worse. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, just don't get hit rent. And um, we're using Seal of Blaze and the two-hander here for that lifesteal, 9%. And also for like pierce resistance, and it also increases your armor, right, by 8%, but as I said before, that's not really the, the best thing here. Maybe scaled height would actually be better in the pants. Uh, we're using sacred plating here and here for absorption, vitality resistance, aether resistance, and HP, and a titan plating over here for physique, armor increase, and most importantly the pierce resistance, because I kind of had trouble overcapping pierce resistance on this character, like you can notice I'm using also... Pierce and Chaos or Pierce and Aether augments on all of my gear here. But I mean, if you don't care about Pierce resistance over cap that much, you don't have to use Titan Splitting here. You can use something else here if you want to. I'm using Tated Heart in the metal for Vitality, Aether, Resistance, Crit, and OA. This is, I think, still like probably the best component for the metal on like almost every build, except for like head builds, for example. Same thing goes for the Seal of Annihilation, which is, in my opinion, the best component for the amulet slot on any build except for pet builds. Reduces OA and DA by the enemy of the enemy, and also gives you spirit, casting speed, and attack speed, and skill, energy, cost reduction. Um, and you're actually using one rune mode to pass and one bloody crystal in this now. Um, bloody crystal that get nerfed though, so. This only gives you 12% bleed instead of 24 now. So I should probably actually switch over to like double bladed crystal now because well my bleed is not overcapped by 30% anymore. And I mean I think I actually have more HP than when I first set up this character now, so I don't really need the additional HP and day from Dunbond to pass anymore. So yeah, a better version would be to have double bladed crystal here now. It would be a better setup in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's gonna cover the gear and all the stuff here, except for the rune of displacement that I have here. That's like my movement ability, rune of displacement. It's probably after the nerf, like it has 30 meter range instead of 15, so it did, it did get nerfed, but uh, it's probably still one of, if not the best ability to use on like casters if you want to have a defensive. Um, Rune Augment. Because it's, it's like teleport is instant, right? It's so much faster than most of the other ones. That's a pretty nice defensive thing. And yeah, my skills, I mean, Blackwater Cocktail, Granado, with the resets, um, Ennister Bomb, Flashbang, Thermite Mines. Um, yeah, I mean, then the buffs Ascension and Courageous Tincture. Courageous Tincture is um, a tincture that you can buy in Homestead, and if, especially if you're playing hardcore, I can recommend this tincture for you on any character. It's super good whenever you're like in fighting a hard boss or I don't know, you're like in a sketchy situation, you just pop those. It's super cheap. 
to buy and gives you 6% DA and 25% more armor, so that's insane. Uh, cluster is also kind of a must-have or like a panic button for hardcore in my opinion. If you're playing softcore, you don't need these. Unless you like you're like undergeared and you want to force a kill on a an enemy that is like super hard. Uh, pet attack here, I mean this was just for well, for dummy kill time, otherwise I would probably um, put this to Tonic of Manning just so that I can see my uh, uh, cooldown of this. I don't need to have my pots on my bar though, because I'm using um, the hotkeys here for drink health potion, drink energy potion. If you bind these and use these instead of this, then you don't have to put your HP and energy potions on your hot bar. But it's sometimes pretty handy though to still have this here just to see the cooldown of your pot, right? And then using Blazing Eruption here, that's just a filler ability from my red deck. And well, move to to be able to move through big packs of enemies and without getting stuck. That's also kinda I I don't play any hardcore character without this to be honest. Like it's it's uh, too sketchy to not have this on hardcore. Anyways, we can move on to some content. I'm gonna show you this character a little bit in action. Alright, let's take this guy for a small spin through the Ogdenborg. So since this character has like a huge amount of burst damage, we're gonna try to kill Raval here as well. It should be pretty good at like killing Raval to be honest. There we go. Let's try to make sure to not stand inside these pools for too long. Alright, since we're here, we can also do a small run through the ancient grove. Um, maybe we are lucky and also meet Koopa Cabra. It would be pretty nice. We'll cut the alarm. Oh shit, I love the new um how to pick up feature. It's just as good as Green Turnus was before. Alright, check out the vendor as always. You know what to do, better chills, frozen hearts. That's the kind of components you wanna buy here. We've got one better shell here. 
And also check out the rings, check out the medals if you're interested in those as well. Check out the belts, maybe they're good now for you. Like They got changed a bit, they have like plus one soldier, plus one inquisitor now. So, you know, maybe you find like something that is good for your build here. Or like maybe a... Uh, well, you don't want puncturing of alacrity, but like... Something with lightning damage here, like charged of alacrity, right? For the two-hander for the promise strike. Alright, Mr. Fumble. Not gonna be afraid of you on this build. There we go. Should take exploded. Seems like we're not gonna find Cuba Cabra on this run. Um, I'm gonna check out for and uh, we'll search for him after this though. Yeah, Mr. Krabs. Gildam Arcanum. I mean, this is a good suffix, but sadly, this amulet is pretty bad. Like, if this amulet was a metal instead, it would be pretty nice to use, probably, for a lot of builds. It's fire saboteurs or fire infiltrators, maybe even. But as it stands, as it's an amulet, the slot is way too contested, and well, that's basically useless. Apparently I forgot to check out this area the last time I was here. But yeah, like on every new character that you push into Ancient Grove, just check out this area at least once. The first time you go here you get like an additional chest I think, or like even two maybe.
All right, Gargar Ball. Um, well, Gargar Ball <clears throat> has like a lot of fire resistance, right? So he shouldn't go as smoothly as like the rest of the dungeon went so far. But we will see. New Thermite Monitor may be good enough to carry us here. Don't be afraid of big hits as long as you still have blast shield, but once that is on cooldown, be sure to respect his damage. I mean, it's already back up though. Yeah. You gotta kite this guy around, this big guy. He's pretty scary for casters like this. But he's also pretty easy to kite, so... I mean, just kite him, right? Alright, so after some searching, we found Kubakabra after all. And we're gonna... Well... Kill him, obviously. Right, clear the area from these Basilisk first. And then... Try to make him explode as fast as we can. Really don't like those plants. Again. As you can see, he's barely able to split before he dies. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is probably the fastest Cuba Cabra killer I've ever seen, at least from my characters. Cuba Cabra can't even hit you basically, or he like explodes. So yeah, this is also by the way all the loot that we got from the ancient grove and uh, well, walking around in the bog searching for Cuba Cabra. Run. <clears throat> What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna search around my ring augment. I mean, I still have, I mean, ring component. I still have the room bond to pause in here. And since Bladed Crystal got nerfed a bit, we're not gonna craft like a second Bladed Crystal here. Put it over here into this ring as well. And after that, we're gonna do and kill Lokar. Alright, so we switched over to a Bladed Crystal here. And we are ready to face Lokar. So, yeah, inside the Lokar dungeon. You have shit freeze resistance like this, for example. Uh, let me check. Yep, zero percent. I mean, basically, as long as you have like below seventy percent, I think you should always use a half first ointment in this area, just to like not die to the bullshittery of um, traps in this area, right? I'm just gonna run straight to Lokar. Um, but yeah, if you wanna farm like Dark Monster for example, do continue the dungeon further down this road and make sure to kill all the Rift, uh, Rift claimed adherents. Those can drop the Dark One set. Now against Lokar, I'm um, gonna pop all the Royal Jellies at least. 
And, uh... I mean, since we are marked, that reduces our DA. I actually think it's, like, reasonable to use a Elixir of the Dragon Hood to increase my DA up a little bit again. Because this is a really hard mutator in my opinion. Oh yeah, low car, here we go. Also remember that we have like two layers of defense, like Ascension and then after that Blast Shield. And blast, once the cooldown of Blast Shield is down, like once the effect of Blast Shield is down, um, we will have to either wait for it, like either Ascension is back up, or we will have to like start kiting a bit. Alright, that was uh, a little bit faster than the last time, actually. Did he even, like, proc my blast shield? I don't think so. But yeah, pretty smooth kill on Lokar. Uh, he can definitely be a little bit harder if he, like, spawns with a hammer, for example. Kinda depends on his weapon, like, which one does he have this time? Thunder Strike of Alacrity, I mean... It's not the worst he can spawn with, right? But it's not that scary compared to some other possibilities. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video of my Shieldbreaker, the Bomberman. And if you want to check out some more gameplay of this character, you can check out the SR5251 video, for example, for this character. Or you could check out some of my Twitch VODs. Um, also, if you would like to see my other endgame builds, feel free to check out my other endgame build highlights or also check them out in my Google Docs. Link is down right down below where you can find all of my builds, even those that are like a little bit worse and like all the other theory crafts as well. And yeah, I mean, check out my Discord as well if you would like to. Check out my stream whenever I'm live. I will be live again in September. So yeah. Looking forward to you guys checking in on my videos and uh, Twitch as well. Um, feel free to comment, like, dislike this video as well. And I'll see you guys next time.